Now we have five major metals being mined in the country. Gold, copper, nickel, chromite, and to a lesser extent, iron. We always say that we have just barely scratched the surface. The environmental uh, repercussions at waste the, the economic benefits of mining in some localities. That mountain is full of mineral, iron ore, copper, and the people do not want to mine. Many mining applicants, but there are so many anti-mining. They don't want our place to be like the other places that uh, flooding is very hazardous. Because there's a general feeling in government that we are not getting enough. At the moment, about 1% uh, of the GDP. The mine will not be here forever. At times, no. I, I think of what will happen after the mining. But no. some of the mines here, they just left. They just left us no more. You know, I was referring to one town, uh, one community in Itugon, where in a community was arrested. After they left the area, the church fell down, the school was uh, fell down, uh, fell down also. Several houses were all, were already missing. Mining is an extractive industry. We do not, you know, gold cannot regenerate. <laughs> the mines closed. Everything closed. Now we have trying to, you know, uh, find ways wherein uh, we could do so, 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 we could make them special training. Uh, gold ores are getting less now. We can. Because, of course, we cannot plant the gold again. <laughs> uh, I haven't really seen much fun uh, being paid to us in the form of a national wealth. Uh, in fact, in some LGUs, uh, some municipalities in my town, they don't put in their targets funds coming from national wealth. They just appropriate it if funds is already there. They, they don't really incorporate that in their targets because they, they do not know if it will come or it, when will it come. They do not know. We have had complaints from governors, from mayors, that uh, they wake up and they're surprised that uh, mineral production sharing agreement had already been issued in their area. That should actually not happen. But we are really at a loss uh, because all permits are being issued by the MGB. I'm referring to big mines. Once they issue the, the permit, the rehabilitation plans is with them. So sometimes really they don't know what is happening. And that's why I agree that in AO79, social acceptability should include also the local government. Because if there are problems, like what happened to problems in Felix, like to what pro happened, uh, problems that happened in Benguet Corporation, where in 16 miners were, were trapped inside their tunnels, it was the local government unit who responded immediately. We don't issue permits, but we respond if there are problems. We're not being informed, so uh, if we have some money and we plan to appropriate some for that, it might be that their corporate social funds might have overlapped what we have funded. We only hear from the newspaper, read from the newspaper, that's all. We really see that we need to do a real evaluation, a full cost accounting, so to speak, so that we are able to do an actual costing of the social, environment, and economic impacts of mining. So you see both the benefits and the cost. We have a poor value-adding industry. So we're losing a lot in terms of value. Because, for instance, in the case of nickel, when we ship out nickel ore, we are not paid based on the actual price of nickel in the market. We are paid X percent of the price, and that X would be 10 percent. So we lose 90 percent of the value. We only have one copper smelter, and we are even importing the raw material of that 
copper smelter because all our copper concentrates are already covered by contracts with foreign smelters. In an ideal situation, we need all minerals mined in the country should be processed also in the country. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, as our president said, if the, the communities really don't want it, we should not allow it, you know, because they're the ones who are going to be affected. Yeah. What needs to be done, I think, is to make that a little more transparent so that people actually know and the local governments and the local communities are involved no, in the process. The way we are able to involve them right now is when uh, an environmental impact assessment is done because the EIA requires uh, that there be consultation, so from the scoping side all the way to the actual preparation of the EIA. Large-scale operations are regulated by the national government, particularly the DNR, Department of Environment and Natural Resources. And some of the mechanisms are already in place. Uh, the regulations are actually, most of them are in place. Unlike in small-scale mining, wherein there are a lot of small-scale operations and it's very hard for the government to really regulate all these operations at the local level. In view of the number, maybe, of the small-scale mining operations, it's really very hard for this authority to really monitor the compliance of small-scale mining operations. And the small-scale miners who do not pay taxes, they represent more than 30% of the total mineral production value. We are adapting the waves. It implies that uh, if ever government will decide to pursue a mining project, there is assurance that it is able to weigh the overall cost-benefit, not only in terms of economic, but also social, environmental, and the concerns of all stakeholders. And you also then all do an accounting of what are the economic activities that are likely to be done in the area so that government, in terms of its planning and decision-making, is properly guided. Because if you're, you're going to make more money, by keeping it, uh, making it an agricultural and ecotourism uh, and a tourism area, for example, vis-a-vis -vis mining, then it makes sense for us not to allow mining. If you have a mining project, it must significantly contribute to the economy. Second is about the environment. If you are allowed to do mining, your mining project must be able to remediate the impact on the environment, addressing the post-mining land use of the area so that in the overall uh, land use of the area continues from the pre-mining land use to the mining stage as a temporary land use and to the, the post-mining stage which is the permanent land use of the area. And the third is the social. Every mining project must be able to significantly contribute to the social development of the host communities so that even if mining is gone that community will will still be will be self-reliant so you don't produce ghost, ghost towns just like what happened before This is all part of the overall policy reform for good governance and anti-corruption. And that's a cabinet cluster in the country that is shared by no less than the president. A very transparent and clear system for revenue recognition, recording, distribution, as well as uh, utilization uh, by both national and local governments. The systems for, for that need to be really firmed up. We have laws that ban or strictly regulate chemicals. Under EU 79, we have just banned mercury. The, you know, the share of the Barangay Taganito 
uh, the revenue coming from uh, uh, Taganito Mining is uh, uh, no, uh, allocated to infrastructure, health, and uh, uh, education, tapos life. And uh, in one of our surveys undertaken in the 1980s and 1990s, uh, we found out that the wage wage rate received by the miners in those areas all over the country. We have chosen several several uh, mines in the north, in the in the Visayas, and in Mindanao. They were receiving more than the wage rates in the national capital region because of the non-cash benefit. Uh, Biberly is a uh, ano, uh, barangay nurse, but. Uh, the salary is funded by the mining. So presently, we are reforesting areas which was mined out by Atlas before. So eventually, if this will be mined out or mining will be finished in this area, that is when we start reforesting it. Mining, mining activities have always been uh, great generators of revenue and if we can have such revenue, government can use it for green activities and that is the reason why uh, foremost in the agenda is raising revenues, uh, share of government from mining revenues. We want to have a green, greener, more sustainable development. I think every country has to identify where is the nature or the potential of every country in generating resources that can be used for poverty elevation and even uh, uh, the same way protecting the environment. Uh, it must be paid during the year so that it would also be spent during the year. Uh, so that's one thing that we are looking at. What's happening now is the share of the local government unit, they have to pay that first to the following year to the, uh, no, they pay it to the national government through the Bureau of Internal Revenue, the collecting arm of the national government. And then, including the share of the local government units. What they do there is, uh, uh, after that, they, they will enter that to the national coffers. And you know, if it entered the national coffers, it couldn't be spent without the appropriation. They have to go to Congress again and then tell them, ask them, you appropriate the share of this LGUs. That's our money. That's the share of the local government unit. Why need to enter it to the national government? Then why wait for Congress to appropriate the money? That's really ours. I think one very important area is uh, the utilization of the local government share in the revenue. Uh, at the moment, it is at 40 percent, and the local governments have proposals to to increase it uh, to a bigger share. That's one. Now, number two is. How do you really uh, earmark such uh, incomes from extractive industries to address poverty and uh, environment degradation at the local level? Uh, th these things must be really laid out very well in a clear policy. Uh, 